Thank you guys for joining me. Welcome into the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Manny Maradiege. I have a lot of stuff to talk about on today's episode, starting with the Tennessee Titans and the speculation and topic around their number seven pick. What it's looking like right now that they're going to draft and how it could be a bit closer than a lot of people think. Later on in the show, I'm going to talk about the Jacksonville Jaguars head coach, Doug Peterson, and what he would like to see more out of his team in 2024 to make sure they take that next step and not have such a drastic fall off like they did last season, as well as talking more in detail about the Stefan Diggs trade, more on the Bills side of things, why they ended up trading him, and all the factors that led into such a big move at this point in the offseason. So, A lot to talk about today. Remember to like, follow, and subscribe to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast on both the GSMC Sports Network channel and the GSMC Podcast Network channel, as well as on all the social media platforms. Before I get into segment one, I want to remind you guys, if you want to get involved with the show, ask me questions or leave any comments during this live show, to please use the tip and donations link which is gsmcpodcast.net, with any of your questions and comments. Using that link, make sure your question pops up right away in my chat box. I can read it on air and answer your questions or comments. It makes it more fun. It's a big help for this show as well as all the other shows. If you guys are able to do that, with the link again, gsmcpodcast.net. We always appreciate it greatly whenever you guys are able to do that. And saying that, I will jump into that first segment, like I mentioned. The Tennessee Titans, picking number seven, not the most overhyped or really talked about pick in the top ten. It's all been around the top five, top four, pick six, and then what's going to happen after that. Really, the Falcons and the Titans get no attention because those seem like the most obvious picks in reality in the top ten. The Falcons have to go defense. Every mock draft you see or that I've seen has them taking Dallas Turner, the edge rusher from Alabama, and it makes sense. They desperately need a pass rusher. I've said it on this show. So that one is probably the most obvious pick in this top 10. And then the Titans are all but set. It seems they're drafting Joe Alt. It seems like that's the consensus. That's what everyone is getting out of Tennessee. And with some reasoning behind that, obviously, because their general manager, Joe Carthen, has said that their main focus is offensive line as well as wide receiver. And that's where I wanted to go with this whole conversation around the Tennessee Titans. Every draft, mock draft, has been Joe Alt, Joe Alt, Joe Alt, and more Joe Alt to the Tennessee Titans at number seven. But wide receiver is a real possibility here. Just listening to head coach Brian Callahan and their general manager, Rand Carthen, both have stressed offensive line is important, that no one's arguing that, but wide receiver also is, depending on how you value it, how you see it, scoring points now is more important than ever in any point in NFL history with how talented everybody is, all the quarterbacks, the good teams have. You have to be able to put up points. And that's what Brian Callahan, their new head coach, was kind of going when he commented on this back at the NFL Combine. Back then when they asked him about it, he said, you can never replace elite talent. The better players you have, the better coach you are. I will never pass up on elite talent just because we have a great coach. A great coach with elite talent is special. He said that back at the Combine. And just further on in that sentiment, To talk more specifically about wide receivers, he said, When all things are equal, guys that can score touchdowns tend to make more of an impact. In the simplest of forms and terms, yes, that makes sense. It's all subjective on how your team's made up, on how... um, who your quarterback is. He must think of Will Levis pretty, pretty highly to mention, you know, putting up points and just surrounding him with all of these weapons that he has. It makes the decision easier, I guess, later on when you're deciding on Will Levis if he, if he has a bad year. You can't really blame it on the rest of the team because they have Calvin Ridley, DeAndre Hopkins, and if they draft, do indeed draft the receiver at number seven, 
then there's really no excuse for the poor performances on offense. Regardless of offensive line struggles, lucky for the Titans, the two main focuses for them this year, wide receiver and O-line, those are probably the two deepest positions in this year's draft. Everyone talks about Malik Neighbors, Marvin Harrison, Roma Dunze, but there's a lot of talent that can be found in the later rounds. Thomas Bryan Jr. from LSU. Malachi Corley is another one from West, Western Kentucky. A great prospect. I got, has gotten a lot of attention at his pro day. He performed very well. And then offensive tackles, there's a ton. But talking about offensive tackles and O-line, those are more likely to go earlier just because everybody knows how important it is. And it all, again, depends on if they fit for the team, if the team really likes that prospect. They'll move up and go get him by any means, but usually when nobody moves, there's no drafts made, if people have to settle on someone, they're going to draft an old lineman, so that's kind of where it stands right now. The the Titans have a great opportunity to draft the presumed best one in Joe Alt. He's been the number one ranked offensive tackle this whole time, but then there's also other ones that you can get in the later rounds if they decide to trade back or like I talked about yesterday with Jim Harbaugh and the Los Angeles Chargers he stressed greatly that the offensive line is something that probably he views as the most important piece of his entire scheme game plan re uh, evolution of this Chargers offense and he's picking at number five so I brought up the idea of if they take Joe all at number five you know where does this leave uh, where does this leave Brian Callahan and the Tennessee Titans? Are they going to pivot just and move on to a wide receiver, or are they going to trade back, depending on how it all plays out? It's really the biggest wait-and-see game right now. It's three weeks before, two weeks before the NFL draft. It's always reacting to stuff that happens. Once someone makes a move, you can get a clearer picture of how everything pans out. But it's interesting to think about this situation that the Titans find themselves in right now between offensive line and wide receiver because Brian Callahan witnessed a similar situation back when he was with the Cincinnati Bengals back in 2021 when the discussion was all around do we get offensive line help for Joe Burrow to protect Joe Burrow coming off a major injury or do we get the wide receiver that has great chemistry with him, is a game changer, one of the best receivers in the NFL draft, in Jamar Chase. Do we go get him or protect Joe Burrow? They decided to go with Jamar Chase instead of Penny Sewell in that in that draft. And obviously in hindsight now, it's looking like a genius move by the Bengals because now their offensive line, they've addressed it and they still have Jamar Chase. And they made it to a Super Bowl right after really making that pick. So it looks great now, but it's funny to see how that has kind of swung around now with Brian Callahan in Tennessee. Now, it is a little bit different because it, most likely he's not going to have one of the top three receivers at seven and Joe Alt sitting there. So that's the biggest difference, but there are some similarities there. And seeing how it all plays out with the Chargers mostly, if they trade back, and a team like the Broncos or the Raiders move up there, then they're really going to have a shot at Joe Alt because the Giants most likely won't try and draft him. Then they're up at that point. They might lose out on a wide receiver, but they could still get the offensive tackle. It's a lot of moving pieces right now, a lot of ifs and buts with this whole situation with the Chargers and the Titans specifically. Um, If they go Joe Alt, and say the Chargers get a wide receiver and then they get Joe All. Is that the smartest move for a Tennessee Titans team that I've said I've been a fan of what they've done this offseason? I've liked the additions of Calvin Ridley, DeAndre Hopkins. But if you have Joe Alt sitting there and you still sit at seven, would it be so crazy to think that you can move back and trade out of there? If, again, it all depends if they love Joe All, is if he's their number one player, go ahead and draft them. But I have to think that they're planning not to have Joe Alt because the Chargers are very high on offensive line. I know they're receiving trade calls, but it's still a possibility. They have to have other prospects to be their number one guy if Joe Alt's not there. Same with wide receivers. Wide receivers are more likely to be gone. So would it be the worst idea now if 
the Titans trade back a little bit, and with, uh, you could think, maybe the Broncos, the Raiders, maybe somebody else in the mid-rounds to move up and try and get a wide receiver or another position that they have high value on. That hasn't been reported or anything like that, but that's the biggest thing right now. If you have the ball in your court and you have Joe Alt sitting there, do you accumulate more draft capital as an effect to try and build up the rest of this roster? Because they're not really a finished product. They're getting there. They still need a few more pieces. I would like to see them add more on defense. They got Legereus Sneed. Their secondary is still not really much more other than that. They got a Woozy, which is great. They have two, one very good corner, one of the top ones, and then a Woozy is a, very decent he's not bad but you could definitely get better there and he is on the I think he's 30 or on the other side of 30 so that's another thing safety could be an issue that they address pass rushers or edge rushers I should say that is all the situations right now going through my head and I think it's not so cut and dry with the Tennessee Titans and figuring out oh they're just going to go tackle or and and that's it they're just going to move on after that Brian Callahan is stressing bringing a more aggressive, spread, offensive scoring mindset to this Tennessee Titans team. It's something people might not be used to, but it's definitely a good thing, in my opinion, to see this out of the Titans, to try and modernize their offense a bit more. I think it's going to benefit them a lot because they just got Stephon Diggs in their division, so they're definitely going to have to put up points to try and compete with the Houston Texans. And on that, I'll leave that conversation there. In the meantime, we'll transition. I'm going to have a lot more time to talk about Stefan Diggs later in the show. But for now, we're going to go to the first break of the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. And on the other side, we're going to talk more about my predictions and my options available to the back-end teams picking in the bottom 10 of the first round in the NFL Draft what holes they need to fill in their roster, and what options are out there when they're selecting in the back end of the first round. A lot more on top of that. Don't go anywhere. A lot more to come on the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. (laughs) 